Hello, welcome to another Purple Insider Extra. Matthew Collar, Sam Ekstrom, TCO Performance Center in the background here as we've just finished up another practice of day three. Let's start about the, the health, Sam, which is where we need to begin. Still no Christian Derrissaw, but a good sign for Bashad Breeland as he was doing the most that we've seen him do so far. And taking first uh, starting cornerback reps opposite Patrick Peterson, um, I guess I might have expected him to ease in a little bit and split with Cameron Dantzler, but it looked for the most part like Breland was the starting outside corner on the other side. And you've said all along, I give you credit, Matthew, you projected him as the future starter of this team. I thought it to be more on Dantzler if he can uh, prove that he's taken the next step and his health will have a big part in that. But Rashad Breeland, now that he's healthy, I thought he looked pretty good today. He had an interception of Kirk Cousins. He defended Justin Jefferson pretty well a few times. Uh, a good day for the new acquisition. Yeah, and I think that he's the starter because he came here to start. I don't think a guy who won a Super Bowl ring as a starting corner was going to go any place where they didn't give him that opportunity. So even though they didn't give him a ton of money, they give him the chance to be the top corner. And also Mike Zimmer made some comments about Cameron Dantzler that made me think, uh, he's not really hyping him up as as cornerback number two even though he was there the first couple of days we saw bc johnson go off the field with what appeared to be a leg injury or a knee injury today that'll be worth tracking and your guy kj osborne was taking almost all of the first team reps with the wide receivers so we're starting to see that battle separate just a little bit early here in camp yeah, and you know, if D.D. Westbrook hadn't been brought in, I'd probably be pretty hyped right now, but I think we still have to account for D.D. Westbrook coming back and integrating here. Now, we don't know when that's gonna be. He hasn't really done much of anything the first three days, uh, which tells me that he's still a ways away from being 100%, only eight months away from his surgery. So he is kind of on like the early end of when you would expect someone with an ACL to return. Uh, but K.J. Osborne, another good diving catch today. He spoke after practice. We'll have a story on K.J. next week about what his offseason looked like. We talked about that in yesterday's video. But uh, he's just been learning a lot from, like, really good receivers. He's been texting Adam Thielen, you know, learning from Justin Jefferson. Uh, it seems like he's kind of staking his claim a little bit, uh, at least to, you know, make this roster at minimum and uh, be a wide receiver three, best case scenario. And we will see pads, pads, pads when they come on then guys uh, separate themselves generally, and that's not gonna happen still for a few days here. Christian Derrissaw still not practicing. We see Rashad Hill taking all the first team reps, but the rest of the offensive line, a lot of mixing and matching, including something that really stuck out to me today, which is Wyatt Davis taking center reps with the third team, and then after practice, he was doing even more snapping with Kellen Mond. Uh, Sam, is that a thing that we need to talk about, or you just think it's sort of mixing and matching and cross training? I think there's a little bit of that. Um, you know, the backup centers on this team, I think are both in danger of not making it because Dakota Dozier and Mason Cole are anything but locks. And if they were in a position where they both got cut, well, you don't really have a backup center then. So I guess you want to make sure Wyatt Davis can do it. I think the first time he tried it today, he had a, like a really low snap that Kellen Mond struggled to pick up. Um, so I'm not going to read too much into it. It was a little bit strange. You know, he kind of needs all the work he can get at guard if he wants to compete for that spot. But uh, today was a pretty big Ole Udo day, getting yep. most of the first yep. team reps at right guard. Yeah, I don't know what to make of Wyatt Davis taking center snaps because usually they cross train the guys who are going to be backups potentially. And uh, maybe it's just one day and this will be something we, we track as we go along. But like you said, Wyatt Davis was projected to be the starting right guard, and we haven't seen any of that. Again, no pads yet so far, so no reason to panic, but with Ole Udo taking almost all of the snaps today, I think even early on we're seeing a little bit of an emergence of him in that right guard position. Now, once they get into preseason games, that will tell us a lot more about where everyone stands. All right, what else stuck out to you today, Sam? Um, Herb Smith, a couple great catches, including one where he leapt over top of, I think it was Alexander, bobbled it, caught it along the sideline, had another leaping catch later, and was just super involved in the offense. Uh, we talked to Herb Smith today at the podium. Uh, it, 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 he uh, he went to tight end university this off season where he learned from like Travis Kels, it's Kels, not Kelsey. Oh, I um, saw that. And, and George Kittle. And it seems like it's, it's really been impressed upon him the importance of of blocking and doing the little things and you know he's gonna have to do a lot of that with Kyle Rudolph out of the equation so I, I think Herb Smith's uh, 
you know, what I've seen from him so far in his starting tight end role has been pretty encouraging. Irv Smith, I think one of the early winners of the offseason. He came back looking bigger, looking prepared, and even just standing close to him. The last time we saw him up close, 2019, looks bigger to my eye. Like he's really been taking this uh, role seriously and starting to step up into it. And again, we'll see how that plays out. I, I hate to say that after everything, but we've got a long way to go here. Uh, but I think Irv Smith has looked very good and is a very big part so far of the offense. Uh, on the defensive side, linebacker number three is an interesting thing that we're tracking. I talked to Cam Smith after practice today, and he's talking about how much more he knows about the game after missing all of last year with his heart issue. Nick Vigil has been getting a lot of the first team reps, but also Cam Smith working in. I think that's an interesting one to watch, but a little nugget that Adam Zimmer dropped today was that Paul Gunther, a guy who's brought in as an assistant on defense, really liked Nick Vigil and brought him in here, was responsible for bringing him in, which makes me think that they'll probably keep Vigil and potentially Cam Smith, but there's going to be quite a battle there with Troy Dye mixed in as well. And Chaz Surratt too. He got a couple first team reps today. And the other thing Adam Zimmer said was is that coverage is really, really important. He kind of doubled down on that. And Nick Vigil is a cover guy. Like he is, he's someone who's going to help you in pass defense. Cam Smith, based on his college resume, he's a run stopper. Now we, we don't know how he's developed. We haven't seen much of him to be honest in his two years in the league, one of them being you know out for the entire season. Uh, so he's going to have to cover because I, I think the Vikings recognize that you'd rather give up the five yard rush than the 30 yard pass on a wheel route. And I think Nick Vigil is probably best equipped to do that right now. But, um, you know, Cam Smith would be an amazing story if he could come in and play this year. Yep. And we could see him as a special teamer as well. It will depend. Uh, Cam uh, Chaz Surratt very likely to make the team just by his draft status. So you lock him in. You lock in Kendricks, you lock in Barr, and then after that, would they keep two more guys or just one? Um, that will be uh, interesting to watch as we go forth. All right, that's it from us. We've got the night practice tomorrow night. That will be uh, worth watching as well. Always one of the events of training camp. So keep your eye on the YouTube, and we will catch you next time. Purple Insider Extra.